imagining Isaiah in his underwear right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yahweh bless you. My name is Aaron Cunningham. The cameraman's name's Isaiah. He likes to do tricks on me. Uh, uh, tonight I want, to, I want to do a teaching. Um, I want to share on Romans 1 and Romans 2. And what it's going to be is, you know, Yahweh is a righteous Elohim to even those who don't know His name. And everybody is going to get a chance. Everybody gets a chance to go before a righteous judge. If a judge here, if an immigrant came from another country and they just got here, they didn't know about an unusual law that we had, would a judge have mercy or would he have... Yeah, Yahweh is perfect judge. And so Romans 1 and Romans 2 is going to be about our perfect judge. And what's a, it was neat because uh, reading about David Livingstone, and he gets to meet this Indian, this uh, not Indian, African tribe. Start and he's sitting with this this, this chief, and the chief and I'm just imagining him sitting at like a teepee or something like that or a campfire is there, and the chief says, "Tell me, do you white people believe in any kind of great judgment?" I'm like, "Wow, that's interesting, right?" Mm -hmm. And and, and Doctor <coughs> Livingston said, "There's going to be a great white throne judgment." Everybody will be going before Jesus Christ. And he started witnessing about this judgment. And as the chief hears it, the chief says, My bones are shaking in reverence. He, then the chief, as he heard more about this, do you know what he told him? He said, Oh, if only the chiefs who were before me could have heard. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. What about the chiefs that were before him? What does religion say happened to him? Again. They're, no, you're saying what the hell? Oh, you can't, you can't, you, you, you can't, you can't, you can't go to heaven without Jesus Christ. What about these people or whatever? That's what religion says. And but what does Yahweh say about the Polynesians when when Moses 1590 B.C. was alive? There are people in China. What about those people? How are they going to be judged? Yahweh explains it in Romans one and two. And a neat way of looking at the word is I like to think about, I wanted to do a drawing of, a, of a, a circuit breakers. So my father and I, he was generous, as usual, to install lights for me and a heater for my Christmas present. But we needed to find out which breaker this is. This is a relatively new house. I don't know what breaker that is. So what can you do with a breaker box? He wouldn't do it, but I'd do it. I'll just hit every single one until we get to that one. I've done that before. So we, it's not that one. It's not that one. Not that one. Not 20 minutes later. Well, we know what it's not, right? Until you find it. We should do the same thing with Yahweh's Word. When somebody says something, well, what about this? You go, I, I might not be able to explain that difficult question, but I can't tell you what it's not. It's none of these things. We know that He's a righteous God. We know Jesus Christ, and here's the rest of these things. And, and so, but that's just good ways to witness to people. Um, you don't have to explain a difficult verse, uh, but you can definitely say what it's not. Yeah. Uh, so, um, we're going to hear from our Heavenly Father. Uh, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Rachel, would you open with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your favor in our lives. <clears throat> we thank you that you inhabit the praise of your people. We thank you for grafting us in when we were <clears throat> Gentiles. I thank you that uh, for the body of Christ, regardless of color or uh, <clears throat> creed, uh, that, that we have family um, um, in a union all throughout the edges of the earth because of what Christ did for us. So if anybody wants to speak in tongues and interpret or prophesy according to 1 Corinthians 14, please do. I'll prophesy. <clears throat> Come before me and <clears throat> cast your your cares and your desires, the the all the things that you are contemplating, the 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 struggle with the sin that you have in your life. Bring these all before me. Cast these down. The the we may squash them both together. That I have overcome these through my Son. That these things have been rendered done. 
and you are elevated and you do have authority. So see yourself the way that I see you and come before me and open your mouth that you may speak and that my words may flow. I'll prophesy. Open the floodgates of your heart. Tell me, get on your knees and tell me what it is you want. I know your heart and I see it, but you need to open up to me and you need to get on your knees and start telling me these things, what you desire, child, because I love you and I care about you and I want you to trust me enough to let me see you vulnerable. My children, <clears throat> there is a harmony or melody I have, and every person is in it. And then when you do the syllables and there's a bad one or something, you need to redo it and keep doing it. And those are the people who are bad. And just teach them my word, and then they come into a beautiful syllable <clears throat> and keep practicing my child, and there will be a beautiful harmony and song. Mm -hmm. Berbidiano sato ke mi arbiniano kai, my miro sia tianiato pise, ki se mi kita para bui mi tia. I see a great tree. It's massive. It's like the ones that you witnessed when you were in California, this huge tree. You've never seen anything that large before or that high before. You've never seen the, or heard the silence under the tree or the quiet that you receive standing there in awe. Remember that I'm greater than that tree. I'm the one who planted it. I'm the one who created it. So give me the confidence that you need. Give me the confidence that will allow me to come before you and show you where your feet need to go on this path that you've chosen. I thank Father for those words through Christ Jesus. And the neat thing about Esther's tongues of interpretation, before I started, um, the guitar didn't quite sound in tune, even though I just tuned it. Something was just a little bit off. And if, if you're a musician, it can be very irritating. I mean, because if one thing's flat, and, and you guys probably even hear it. I mean, you hear my mistakes, I'm sure. But as I was considering the six strings on the guitar, uh, Yahweh it kind of gave me a glimpse of six disciplines in our lives. If we are exercising them, we will be in tune when He wants to grab us. Are you, are you speaking in tongues every day? Are you prophesying every day? Are you reading His Word every day? Are you, how, how, how much time are you devoted to, to praying for other people every day? And you can think of these things. And if you're doing those, not for me, not to keep up with Him or her, but for Him. Your, the heart that is in your chest belongs to Him. The breath in your lungs belongs to Him. And if you are tuning yourself like this, you know, you're, just, you're like, hey, it's very pleasant. We can be pleasant. Have you ever, you ever heard somebody play a guitar that's not tuned? That could be our lives. You're out of tune. Well, I got one thing. That's really, you might have one string in. And that's good. But you can only play one string. So two, He wants balance. So good balance. That's joy. Be in the war. Be serious, but be joyful. Not stressed out. That, that could be that, that could be a difficult one. My dad reproving me, saying, "You look so angry. Don't you call me a church angry one." But I was like, "All right, shoe fits." <laughs> Anyways, before we're going on to Romans one and two, um, we're, we're going to go to Exodus, page eighty-seven. I'm going to give you a page number because I want. I'm going to try to not go too long. Page 87, Exodus chapter 4. And so uh, the word judgment, I've said it before and then Dad's corrected me. It doesn't sound right. And, and also, for the record, when I say something's going to work for me, I don't mean that. I would never mean a condescending. Because he that humbles himself, he that exalts himself will be humbled, right? So if I say something comes off wrong, it's always going to be under this context. And so Dad's reproved me. He goes, the way you say some things, you look haughty. Well, that's not my intention. You don't do a teaching. If you exalt, if you exalt yourself, you're going to be humbled. I mean, it's, it's that. But, okay, but here, um, it, it, Yahweh's judging, and I thought of a better word, just the judgment would be warning. Warning. Warnings, right? 
And so Moses is going to be sent to the sons of Abraham. Did Moses know <laughs> Yahweh's name? No. He did not know Yahweh's name. Never heard it. Did Pharaoh know Yahweh's name? No. Did Israel know Yahweh's name? As far as we don't know, 400 years and they disappeared. It's one of the first things that disappears captivity. Now Yahweh says, go to the sons of Abraham and tell them I sent you. Okay? So that's going to be like going to the religious people. Go to the Catholics. Go to the Protestants. Go to the uh, Jehovah Witnesses or whoever, the Latter-day Saints. So and Moses is going to say in verse 1, Then responded Moshe and said, And lo, they will not believe me, neither hearken to my voice. For they will say, Yahweh hath not appeared unto thee. And Yahweh said unto him, What is in thy hand? And he said, A staff. Then he said, Cast it to the earth. And he cast it to the earth, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from the face thereof. And Yahweh said unto Moses, uh, 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 Put forth thy hand and take it by its tail. So he put forth his hand and laid hold of it, and it became a staff in his hand. That they may believe that Yahweh thy Elohim of the fathers, Elohim of Abraham, Elohim of Isaac, and Elohim of Jacob have appeared unto thee. Then said Yahweh unto him yet again, Bring, I pray thee, thy hand to thy bosom. So he brought his hand into the bosom, and then he took it out, and his hand was leprous like snow. And he said, Put it back, put back thy hand in thy bosom. So he put it back in his hand into the bosom, and then took it out of his bosom, and lo, it, it had come again like his own flesh. Thus shall it come to pass if they do. If they will not believe thee, nor hearken to the voice of the first sign, then will they believe the voice of the next sign. It shall come to pass, if they will not believe even these two signs, nor hearken to thy voice, then shalt thou take water out of the river and pour it on the, out, on the dry land. So shall the water which thou hast taken from the river become ye, shall become blood on the dry land. Power. And you know... To go off on a side note, how can we witness to somebody going the wrong direction when they have all their traditions and stuff? We All of us in this room had our own traditions too. And we we're having to get rid of these things and get rid of these things because we we're trying to prepare ourselves for the final, our final examination, right? But one of the ways that we can cross, I've had to do that with people, and Yahweh helped me with it. How do I help somebody that thinks they're ten times smarter than me, that thinks they don't need help? Power. Can I pray for you? You give them a prophecy, and what happens with a prophecy? Yahweh knows how to communicate, and that's what's uh, one of the things. One of the things with all of this, Yahweh is the perfect communicator. So is His Son. I'll, our, uh, Yahweh will communicate things to me, and then I'll try to explain to my dad what he was telling me, or or somebody, and then the people I'm telling them, they'll disagree with what I said. That's not Yahweh. I'm like, you don't understand. I know exactly what he meant. I just can't articulate it. Have you guys ever had that? Yes. <laughs> he's a perfect communicator. He's so perfect, I can't even explain what he just told me. But I know what I'm supposed to do. Why? He's a perfect communicator. He's a perfect Elohim. He's a perfect father. He gives everybody a chance. And so what he will do with prophecy also is if we say, can I give you a prayer? Can I pray for you? Find a reason. Can I, hey, you start talking about the work. Can I pray for you? You can cross the aisle and reach into them, and, and uh, Yahweh will, will get a hold of them. And they'll get to see power, and they go, what the heck was that? Now, whether they take it or not, that's, that's between them. But they have been warned. Uh, not necessarily a bad warning. That person's got something. Your knowledge doesn't have. But Moses was able to do that. Uh, and so what happened with Moses? Did it, did, how did he prove the Elohim of the Father has sent me? Power. Power. And do you, were, there, were there Hebrews that didn't want to follow him? Yeah. Absolutely. And so there's going to be Christians that aren't going to want to follow Yahweh. There's going to be people that are going to follow us. It has nothing to do with knowledge. They've been warned. They've been served. They've made their choice. They're going to go that way. Don't worry about them. Okay? Now we're going to turn to Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul, you can imagine. Okay, we'll turn to Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians. Because Moses is going to come up with all these Levitical laws. Where do these things come from? Moses is going to tell us about Adam and Eve and Genesis. Were there Hebrews older than him at this time when he's writing these books? When he's penning, when Yahweh's writing them? And he's going to go, hey, hey, Moses, I don't know what you heard up there on Mount Sinai when you're penning Genesis, but that's not what my dad told me. And Moses, well, he, he, was, he, was, he was an exception to all the rules, right? And I was thinking about that, how, uh, I was thinking about that, how Yahweh would talk to his son. I'm like, wow. Well, he talked to Moses face to face. 
But anyways, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, let me see here. We'll do 12, 12 first. We weren't going to go here, but I think it's going to be important. 12, 12. For just as the body is one and yet many members, but all the members... I don't think that's the right one. Let me see here. I wrote 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Unless it's 2 Corinthians. You said before. Okay. We'll turn to uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 4. It might be 2 Corinthians 12, 12, but 2, 4 in those right. And here's the Apostle Paul. Okay, my dad pointed some things out that I had never thought of. The Jews obeyed the Levitical law. And, and if you picked up stones or sticks on the Sabbath, it was a, you should be put to death. Yeah. It's a serious offense. It's like raping somebody. You don't do it. And so when the Apostle Paul starts talking about no circumcision and the rest of this stuff, why would anybody believe this guy? What's it say? Would you read that, Mom? What I, are you talking? First Corinthians chapter two, verse four. And my discourse, and what I proclaimed, were not in suasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and power. In order that your fault might not be in men's in wisdom, faith. faith. Excuse me, in men's wisdom, but in Yahweh's power. So Yahweh knows how to communicate to people, and He'll do the same thing with you, whether it's a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, how to give signs to some people. And some people, there will be no sign. Because Lazarus, what was a rich man Lazarus, the conclusion, if they don't believe Moses and the prophets, and I, I'm not going to go here, I used to say they won't believe if one was raised from the dead. But you know what the word is? It says in the Rotherham. It didn't say believe. They won't hearken. It's a big difference between believing and harking. Mm -hmm. Because those who saw Jesus Christ resurrected in His miracles, they saw it. Do you think they have any problem believing? Were they going to harken? That's something different. So those they're not going to harken to Moses. They're not going to, they're not going to start harkening because they see a resurrection. Um, uh, now, now we're going to turn to Romans chapter 1. And I'm going to read 1 and 2, a lot of it. So then this, this is going to bring us into the Apostle Paul, into Romans 1. And, and whenever we're going to be discussing difficult verses or stuff like that, we go, let's just back up and say, let's just talk about a perfect creator. And, and when we can't explain a difficult scripture, what I can't explain is he asked his son to die for us. Okay, we know about a resurrection. We know, anyways. Now, remember, how was Moses set apart? Power. A serpent. Leprosy. How about the Apostle Paul? Power. And the Apostle Paul, we don't necessarily get to see what he did. He made one guy blind. It's kind of neat. Yahweh doesn't tell us what he did, but I bet you he did some cool stuff. We'll get to see it someday. Mm -hmm. Now, Yahweh gives signs, uh, especially to the, the, the learned. Learned? I've heard it both ways. Uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, a servant of Yehoshua Mashiach, a called apostle separated into the glad message of Yahweh, which he promised beforehand through his holy prophets in holy scriptures. Concerning his son, who came to be of the seed of David according to the flesh. Now let's just pause there for a second. What did he say is going to happen with his son? The son's going to restore everything. We're going to the new earth. He's going to learn people. Yahweh said he's going to send a son. And he's going to say... He promised a, a son through the Holy Scriptures and the prophets. Now it says, concerning a son who came to be of the seed of David, according to the flesh, who was what? Distinguished. What's the footnote say? Mark that. It's the Greek word 3725, horizo. I don't know how to pronounce it. You, you could do a blue letter Bible if you want. Horizo. Do you know what it means? What does it say down here? Marked off. Like Moses. A spotlight's on him. Remember Moses coming down and his face shone? 
what they couldn't even look at it. Yahweh distinguished his son to those, the Jews that were looking from the scriptures for the Mashiach. He made it crystal clear. He distinguished as the son of Yahweh by how? Power. Power. How did they know he was a Mashiach? Power. If you remember, the people of Jesus Christ's time did not value Yahweh's word above their traditions. I think that was Josephus. I think it was Josephus said it was it was the oral traditions or the word. They would say the oral traditions more important. It's the same thing today. So how did he get these people's attention? Power, and it's the Greek word dynamis, fourteen ten, miraculous power, according to the Ruach HaKodesh, through means of footnote. It says a resurrection, but what does it say? A resurrection of dead ones. A little bit different, isn't it? So, what did we just look at right here? Yahweh made it crystal clear. That's the Mashiach. That's my son. I marked it out. He's the one. He's got the he's got the colonel's hat, the captain's hat, or whatever you want. He's got the princely garb. Like remember, Joseph was set apart with a, a cut to neck with clothing. Yahweh distinguished his son how through power and the resurrection, resurrecting of the dead. You know what that means? In the beginning of Romans one, who's without excuse? The Jews. The Jews. Here's the sign. You got to go. Okay. Here it is. You've been warned that's the Mashiach, whether you do it or not. Now, we know later on in Acts, some of the people that said crucify him, they turned, so they were confused. But Yahweh gave a sign. He's a perfect communicator. So the first part of chapter 1 is Yahweh warning the learned, the learned people. You know, you knew this. It's the same thing with the prophecy. Somebody could be a Catholic or it could be whatever denomination. And if Yahweh gives you the green light to go minister to him, now I have to, I have to tell you, my flesh always tries to chicken out. I all, same with thing in the morning. My flesh, everything in the morning, every time in the morning. Aaron, my son, do not run this morning. For this morning, I'm like, oh, you shut up. Every single morning, I try to talk myself out of that and read my scriptures. I'm very, I'm very suasive. But the thing is, I don't want to prophesy. But you can deliver a message, and they'll look, and Yahweh goes, "You've been served a notice." Whether they want, it's like Dad's business cards. But the learned have been warned. Uh, now we're going to fast, kind of, we don't, we don't have to keep reading, we're going to go over to verse 18. What about the people who have never read the scriptures? Somebody recently came to our, our, our Christmas that had not, apparently, little young boy didn't even know what Christmas was about. What do we celebrate? And Holly was able to say the son, of, the son of Yahweh was born. He was born, he died for us. I don't know the whole story, but he didn't know, right? Okay. Now, now, from 18 to the next, we're going to talk about the people who don't really don't know. Not the people who say, I'm agnostic uh, or I'm an atheist. And, and, and if somebody says, I'm an agnostic or I'm an atheist, what do you say? You're a liar. No, you're not. No, you're not. Oh, oh yeah, I'm too! Uh, no, you're not. Do, do you know why they're not? Because they believe in something. Well, well, I mean, we're, we're going to go into it. You're going to say because... That means you can't be judged for this life. If, if I deny there's a judge, you, you, you're, you're, everybody's going to go through a judgment. They're just saying there's no judgment. They're going to go, yeah, yeah, you, you're not an agnostic. You're not an atheist. Uh, when you want help, come to me. <gasps> Could you believe that person? He's never being invited back to my Christmas party. Like, when you want help, I'll help you. But Yahweh, well, now we're going to show you through scriptures. Um, verse 18... Yeah, verse 18. For there, there is being revealed an anger of Yahweh from heaven against all ungodliness to those who read the scriptures. Doesn't say that. To all ungodliness. And what we're going to be finding out pretty soon is about homosexuals. They're actually called sodomites and ephemites. Even if they're not Christians, guess what Yahweh says? They know what they're doing is wrong. They already know. So if you're going to go witness to a, a sodomite or an ephemite, I've got to explain to you why it's wrong. No. They already know it's wrong. Do you want to be delivered from this? Everybody already knows there's a creator, but we're going to go through it, and Yahweh's going to show it. He's going to explain to you why, how we can help them too. Um, 
Uh, let me see here. Where'd I stop? Okay. Uh, uh, 18B. Thank you. You're very you're good at right that. Trust. Who the truth in... Uh, yeah, okay, 18B. All against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who the truth in unrighteousness do hold down. down. Inasmuch as what we may be known of Yahweh is manifest among them. For Yahweh unto them hath made it manifest. Made what manifest? For the unseen things of him from a world's creation... By the things made, being perceived, are clearly seen. What does that mean? An apple is not proof there is no tree. Ha ha! I have an apple. That's proof there's no tree. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. An apple is proof there is a tree. Yahweh is going to show you the creation is proof there's a creator. And, he, and he's going to go on to say they're without excuse. So we don't waste our time with them. They say, um, but he's going to show the things you do see, even his eternal power and divinity. What's this word, divinity? It is a Greek word, 2305. Uh, let's see here. And it's theatos. Theatos. Now, I don't know if I'm, I go to a Blue Letter Bible if you want to know how to pronounce it. This word, and this is T-D-N-T, -T, this is for the Greek uh, commentary, in the tense that something is theatos, or has the quality of the divine, that which shows God to be God, and gives the right to worship. It shows God is God. It's something he did. So what is theatos? Even his eternal power and his theatos. God is God. I am God. To the end, they should be without what? Excuse. excuse. The word excuse is the Greek number 0379, and it is anapolotos. Uh, anapolotos. Um, and it's a word we're going to see again. He's going to show it over and over again. And I looked up the Greek word for this, and do you know what it says, the explanation? There's no excuse. There's no excuse. No excuse. Uh, Isaiah punches... Esther in the face for no reason, right in front of you. I don't want to hear it. And so Yahweh is going to say there's no excuse. Everybody knows there's a creator. Um, Inasmuch as having come to know Yahweh, not as Yahweh did they glorify him or give him thanks, but were made fruitless in their reasonings and darkened with their undiscerning heart. Start studying and learning and learning and learning and studying and learning and learning and learning until they're brainwashed. Uh, but, but they're still not without excuse. Professing to be wise, they were made foolish, like Nimrod, and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for the likeness of the image of the corruptible man and of birds and four-footed beasts and reptiles. Let me ask you guys this. For Democrats and those that are anti-Christ, how do they feel about Barack Obama? Worship. Was there any man above Barack Obama? Yeah. To that lot of people, he was the most powerful man on the planet. Is that the image of Yahweh? No, it's a, it's a man. He's like a pharaoh. It's a very wicked person. When people say Mother Earth or trees or planting a tree or rocks and stuff, a lot of these people, they're, what they're going to do is they're never going to glorify Yahweh, but they're going to glorify yeah. the creation. Let me see here. 24. Wherefore Yahweh gave them up, did I, did I read all the four-footed beasts? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 24. Wherefore Yahweh gave them up in the covetings of their heart unto impurity, so as to be dishonoring their bodies among them. And you think about that with Sodom and Gomorrah. There's just Lot and his two daughters. They were righteous. How much wickedness in there. Was it... What could convince them? They've already made their decisions. They're going to live in wickedness. Um, wherefore... Yeah, let me see here. Verse 25. Mm-hmm. Who indeed exchanged way for truth of Yahweh for, for the falsehood and rendered the worship and service of the cre creature rather than unto the creator. Worshiping the earth, worshiping man. Uh, and, and, if, and if you believe in evolution, what, that, what does that mean? It means man is God. And somebody goes, I believe in evolution. You go, man has always wanted to be God. And that's what they're saying, because there's nothing above a man. And if you're Barack Obama, then you're the top man. He, he is God, is what he thinks. You're like, no, you're a fool. He goes, professing to be wise, you made fools. 
Verse 26. For this cause Yahweh gave them up. That, already read that. No, for this cause Yahweh gave them up unto dishonorable passions. For even their females exchange away the natural use into that which is against nature. In like manner also, even the males, leaving the natural use of the female, flaming out in the eager desire of one for another, males with mem males, the indecency affecting. I was at a, a creation fest, and, and Dad was there, and a woman says, I really believe that some people are born homosexual. With these, They're born attracting a male to a male, or a woman to a woman. And my dad had the best answer. He's sitting there, and he goes, well, I was born with the desire to punch people in the face. Especially if they irritate me. You're born now. Guess what? You don't do it. You don't do it. And then I got to explain to another person. They go, what if it's consensual, this and that? I go, what if it's, you know, you, you don't do it. Everybody's got impulses. All of us have an old man in us. If you don't kill your old man, he's going to be taken over. But when it comes to sexual immorality, uh, thoughts or any of these things, what do you really tell somebody? You have to kill those thoughts. You have to win the war of thoughts. You can't let them plant seeds. And, and then you say, you got to kill that. And you, I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus Christ. Especially sexual immorality. Especially that one. Because all sins are outside the body except for sexual immorality. So Yahweh really warns us. It's like crack cocaine. Methamphetamines. You don't mess with it, man. Um... Uh, now, and the necessary recompense of their error within themselves, duly receiving. And even as they did not approve to be holding Yahweh in acknowledgement. Are they acknowledging Yahweh? Say he doesn't even exist. Yahweh gave them up into a disapproved mind to be doing the things that, that are not becoming. Filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness. Do you know what this is, we're going to go through? It's called the lust, uh, excuse me, the fruit of the flesh. Fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness. I, now, I remember gentleness is a hard one. This is how girls put lotion on their faces. Very gentle. <laughs> That's how I remember gentleness. Peace, uh, faith, meekness, temperance. Those are things we can produce if we choose to produce it. If you feed your old man, what are you going to produce? Dad just did a teaching. If you see somebody in wrath, vomiting out foul words... They're impulsive, they're irritable with everybody, or they're nasty, complaining, you're going to go, you have been feeding your old man. Please stop feeding that monster. Start feeding the new man. <coughs> but we're going to read what, what's going to happen if people are living in that lifestyle. Verse 29, filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, baseness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil disposition, whispers, detractors, haters of Yahweh, insolent, arrogant, vain boasters, uh, inventors of vices unto parents unyielding without discernment regardless of covenants without natural affections who indeed having acknowledged the righteousness sentence of Yahweh that they that, who such things that these do practice are worthy of death and so we're just right there between 18 to 30 Yahweh everybody's already he's going to say they already know what they're doing is wrong um, and verse 2 or chapter 2 Wherefore, inexcusable. This word is the same word as without excuse that we read over in verse chapter 1, verse 20. Inexcusable. Thou art, O man, whoever judges. Um, let me see. For, for whenever thou judges someone else, thy thyself thou dost condemn for the very thing thou dost practice. And so to go into these judgings, uh, well... We know, verse 2, we know, however, that the sentence of God is according to the truth against them, who such things as these do practice, and recognize, reckon thou this, O men, who does judge them, who such things do practice, are yet yeah. doing the same. If somebody is judging people and then practices the same thing, are they guilty? Which I didn't know. It's without excuse. It's the same thing with sexual immorality. Homosexuality, sodomy, bestiality, you know, no, it's inexcusable. You know what you're doing is wrong. Yahweh's yeah, showing this too. I'm going to go back down to, let's see here. I'm going to go to uh, verse 13. Well, I'll go back to verse 11. Um, 
You can keep reading this and just break it down. Oh, it says... Oh, I, I, was, I, was, I was trying not to read the whole chapter. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, you guys stay there. I'll keep reading. Verse three, and reckonest thou a man? That, uh, verse four, uh, chapter two, verse four. Or the rich, riches of his kindness and forbearance and long suffering dost thou despise, not knowing that the kindness of Yahweh unto repentance is leading them? But according to the hardness of thine impotent heart, and that word is used one time in all, the whole yeah, the word of Yahweh, impotent, it's two seventy nine. Are treasuring up for thyself anger. If you don't warn somebody that's treasuring themselves up anger, are you guilty? Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's where to warn people. Speaking the truth in love. Now ver, go, go down to verse 11. Um, For there is no respect of persons with Yahweh. Verse 12. For as many as without law sinned, without law also perished. And as many within law sinned, Throughout law shall be judged. Now I'm going to pause there for verse 13. I, I forgot to do this. The book of Romans is very complex, and there's especially like after chapter 10. And there's some things you start reading, it's going to get very confusing. And if you're going to be reading the book of Romans, go back to we know we know what it doesn't mean. And so if you're going to be reading some difficult stuff, the book of Romans goes pretty good. Then you start getting after chapter 10, you're like, what is he talking about? It's very complex. It's probably like reading calculus. And if, if you're going to be reading those things, put a footnote. We know what it doesn't mean before you go into that. But, but, but before up to chapter 10, it's pretty clear. Um, verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are righteous with Yahweh, but the doers of the law shall be declared righteous. For whensoever the nations which have not the law... Think about that African guy that David Livingston was witnessing to. How quick, at least in that account with, with David Livingstone, how quick did it, how long did it take that chief to say, I want to bow down to that God? When you read this account, it, it, it looks like it happened very quickly. He just needed to know who, who the Creator is. And yes, I want to go to the new earth. Absolutely. And he said, if only the chiefs before me would have had this chance. And what we can read is right here, verse 14. For whensoever the nations which have not the law by nature, the things of the law may be doing the same, not having the law unto themselves are a law, who indeed show the work of the law written on Moses' tablets. Nope. Where is it written? In their hearts. In their hearts. Everybody is programmed with Ten Commandments. We, are, we come with it. It's not the Ten Commandments. But it's like getting a phone. It already comes with Google and some of this stuff. It already comes on it. And they know there is a creator. They know sexual morality is a sin. They know love thy neighbor as thyself. And if they're practicing those things, they'll get to go before the just God. And Yahweh, goes, and Yahweh just said he's, he's not a respecter of persons. And the African or the Polynesian on an island who's on his knees praying to the creator who's loving his neighbors as himself. Now, he could be doing other things, but he's ignorant. He doesn't know about eating fish and be the Sabbath. That's, who's going to be more justified before Christ? Him or the Sadducees and the Pharisees? Yeah, him. Or the religious people at seminary that said there's no speaking in tongues now or prophesying. Or the religious people at seminary that says don't say Yahweh's name. Who's going to get the... What, what kind of judgment are they going to get? The African that never knew Yahweh's name and them who say, don't even say his name. So Yahweh, he's no respecter of persons. But he's, but he's showing right here is those people already know. And what's the neat thing about David Livingstone is was we're reading, he got to meet, and we're going to keep reading on, and it's basically about the tablets of the heart. The people who did not get a chance to hear about Jesus Christ have already been given a chance. Just not to our level. And to much has been given, much is expected. expected. How much is expected out of this room? Are you kidding me? You know how many Bible translations I have? I live in the United States. I can have a Bible teaching in here that breaks the traditions of men. How many people are outside writing? Nobody. We have zero excuses. Yahweh expects a lot out of us. But to these people, there's people out there who are just waiting. The traditions of men says if we don't go out there and tell them about Jesus Christ, they're going to die and where are they going to go? What does tradition say? Hell. Hell. Yeah, uh, but David Livingstone, he got to meet, when, and I was reading this, 
this, this dad, dad let me borrow like a 200 year old book and I'm reading this thing. I've, I've never read like this in my entire life. I'm reading this going, wow. My dad was right. He said, I just got to find something I enjoy reading. I'm reading this book and he's talking about plants and he's talking about this and he finally gets to meet this great chief that we've been trying to meet for years and years and years and years and he finally gets to meet this chief and he says this chief is everything that he, the, the, the pinnacle of a chief probably covered in scars, he's big, he's tall, he goes in a war, and he starts telling about all these different things. His life, he was not born a chief, he was in exile. It actually sounded a lot like King David. He was in exile here, he was in exile here, he got robbed here, he got here and here and here, and now he uh, gets to meet uh, David Livingston, and then he dies. It's like the next day, the guy's dead, or he's dying. David didn't get a chance to witness to him. And he's going, of all the times, I finally got to meet somebody like this, and now he, he, he dies. And you know what David Livingston says after this? I took a picture of it. And he, and he writes this, this sad thing about this guy just dies. And he goes, I'm sure the judge of all the earth will get this one right. And then when I told my dad that, my dad said, of course. Which, that makes sense, right? Is that what's top? No. But I would say, the judge of all the earth is going to get it right. So he, did he have a chance? Well, Debbie Livingstone didn't get the chance to talk about Jesus Christ. Everybody gets a chance. What's the purpose of our life? Our life is to be a walking advertisement saying there's going to be a new earth. There's going to be a new king. Death, pain, famine, those things won't be there. Okay, what's the catch is? No drunkenness? Fornication, covetousness, oh, I kind of like that alcohol one. Okay, <laughs> or whatever, everybody's got a vice. And they start talking about it, and they go, okay, everybody gets a choice to go, to go there. And Yahweh's going to give everybody a choice. But to us, there's a lot more expected out of our lives. How many people are we actually helping? I don't know. After I started reading this, I think Yahweh has higher expectations than I do. Um, but anyways, back to these people, chiefs. Polynesians and dad did a paper on this. This wasn't I didn't find this. Dad dad did a teaching on this. And then when you know dad did a teaching on this, you and I said after you did that, I go, Of course. Of course. If, I mean, of course, in my own mind, I, nobody ever said that, nobody ever taught that, but after dad showed the scriptures, does that make sense that everybody's gonna get a chance? Yeah. Absolutely it makes sense. And here in Romans chapter two, we get to explain it. Everybody gets a chance. They're not in hell. They're in the dirt until Christ comes back. And the, what's really important with all of this, I wish I had a board because I would show you Christ is going to come back. When is he going to come back? We don't know. Who knows? No. He does. Yeah. Does Jesus? No, Yahweh. No, Ye Yehoshua says only the Father knows. When is he going to come back? We have no idea. What does that mean? Stop worrying about it! Didn't I give you enough stuff to do that you're sitting around waiting for something I told you not to worry about? Right? With Christians. He's going to come back. When he comes back, there's going to be a trumpet like Tishri 1. On Tishri 1, there's a day shouting. Adam, on, on, on Tishri 1, Dad just did this with, with Genesis 1 2, with light B. On Tishri 1, when Jesus Christ was born, all the Jews were commanded to be shouting. And they, they, they turned it into fest, uh, trumpets. Woo! These, these shofars. We're going to hear a trumpet, a shofar, and guess what's going to happen? The dead in Christ will rise first. And we'll be looking around going, wow, and then guess what? Get ready, then we're next. And then there's going to be people that are going to be left behind. The people that rejected it. I'm not, I'm not going or they didn't know or they whatever like on, on, on Acts 2. Those people that are left behind, that's the beginning of the book of Revelation. Like Dad did another teaching. He says, Yahweh always removes the righteous. He always removes the righteous. And he just did a teaching of that with, uh, with uh, the wandering in the 40 years. The women didn't die. Uh, it was the, the men, the cowardly men that died. The women, they didn't need to die. They were righteous. They didn't need to die. The men didn't want to go to war. Didn't that make sense? But anyways, the people that are left behind, they were in the tribulation about seven years. There's going to be all kinds of wars. Then the wars are over. There's, there's going to be survivors. And guess what? There's, there's going to be about a thousand year a period. Uh, there's going to be a resurrection. And I, I, didn't, I, wasn't, I didn't intend to go into this. But this would be a perfect place like Dad brought up. 
to resurrect the people who were not at age of accountability. What about aborted babies? Yeah, I, I, I was looking at abortion in the scriptures. Actually, I was looking at necromancers. Uh, you know, Saul went to a necromancer. Mm -hmm. and that, Yahweh says, you don't talk to ghosts. Who are you talking to is the necromancers. And, and you're talking to demons. And if you look up necromancer, do you know what you almost always... Man, it was like one out of every three times if you look up somebody being called out for necromancy, do you know what's in the same... Abortions. I just look up this word necromancer if you ever get a chance and guess what you'll find almost every time talking to the dead abortions talking to the dead this would be, uh, it would be from the babies to Moloch I was going to do a whole teaching on this and then I, then I, I, I did a, a YouTube on heavens for real and here's a little boy went to heaven talked to dead people came back he's talking to his mom and, his, and, his, <laughs> and, and guess what he just talked to the dead and then he tells his mom, why didn't you tell me I had a sister? She told me. And here's abortion and a necromancer right there. But you're like, okay. Um, uh, thousand year kingdom, everybody will get a chance to choose. Where did I stop? Verse 16? Uh, verse 16, chapter 2. In the day of which Yahweh judgeth the secrets of men, According to my glad messages through Christ Jesus, I think about that sometimes. He's a perfect communicator. Sometimes I know exactly what he wants me to do. All of us do. Aaron, you know what you're supposed to do. One, one of the biggest changes in my life when I was at K-State, I was mocking people sticking their hands up. I've never been around it. I've told you guys this story. I thought they were exalting themselves. Mm -hmm. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. And I was mocking them. It was a good thing, for this, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, except for that. And Yahweh went... If it's all about them, do you need attention, Aaron? Nope. Stick your hand up then. I don't want to stick my hand up. I don't, I don't need to. If it doesn't do anything, if it's all about them, go ahead and do it then. And here I had, I had this argument. I chickened out. I couldn't believe it. It's freaking out. Then the next time I went to it, he was going to call me out again. Stick your hand up, Aaron. But, and I'm explaining to you what he, and I can't tell you. He was, he was telling me exactly what to do. And guess what happened? I did it. I started bawling. And I, I obeyed. And for whatever it is, you do, just do what I say. But the point of that was communicating. What are you supposed to be doing? He's telling you what to do. A secret to man, if however thou art taking the name of, of the Jew, resting thyself upon the law, and boasting in Yahweh, and art taking note of his will, and testing the things that differ, when receiving oral instructions out of the mouth, art persuaded, moreover, that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a lot of them that are in darkness, a trainer of the simple, a teacher of babes, having the forming of knowledge and truth and law. Thou thyself that art teaching someone else, thou thyself art thou not teaching. Thou that art proclaiming, do not steal, do thou, does thou steal. Uh, go down to verse 25. For circumcision indeed profit if law thou be practicing. But if thou be a transgressor of the law, thy circumcision hath become uncircumcised. If that, if then the uncircumcision be guarding the righteous requirement of the law, shall not his uncircumcision as circumcision be reckoned? And the circumcision by nature complete the law. Shall judge thee who with notwithstanding the letter of the circumcision or the transgressor of the law. For not he who is one in appearance is a Jew, nor is that which is such appearance in flesh circumcision. But he who is one in secret is a Jew. Think about how many people that didn't get a chance to meet Moses or read a word, but in secret, they bowed down. They talked to the Creator. Um, and say, but he who is one of secret is a Jew, and that in circumcision what is of the heart. The Spirit, not a letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. So, like, so the the righteous people or, or Christians are given signs of power, and that's us. And that's in Romans chapter uh, one, verse four, explain that that you know that He is the Son of Man. And then, and that I, I really think that's why people, people don't like speaking in tongues because if somebody speaks in tongues, then you just bypass all the traditions of man. Because I can lead a you know, 
But then verse chapter 1, verse 19, start reading on, is, it's going to be showing that those who didn't get a chance. And Yahweh's going to say they're going to get a chance. And, and, and Yahweh's law is written upon their heart. And uh, but he's, a, he's a righteous God. He's a righteous communicator. He knows how to communicate to everybody. He gets to see people where they are, and he's working with them. And what, when it's going to come down is to their heart. I was thinking about that even with, but how? But if, if we read Romans one and two, how should we witness to self-proclaimed agnostics and atheists? Should we let them monologue about why there is no creator? That's not helping. No. You know you're in sin. You know you're going to be judged. If you want help with that judgment, here's my card. I got to go. If somebody is a sodomite or a fornicator, he's a guy, it could be a guy watching pornography all the time. You know what you're doing is wrong. No, my dad did this. We did this. No. Sexual immorality, especially with, with, with homosexuality and stuff. When you want to be delivered from this prison, come see me. And, and, be, and, and then they go, well, how could you say that? Other Christians might look at you. How could you do that? Let's just take a look at what Yahweh has told us. They already know. But Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for Tim's birthday and for this word. Don't be fearful of speaking my word because when you speak my word, it's like releasing magic words. And as they come out of your mouth and as they go to the, the, the hearer of the word, I'm able to do wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things. Not just with your words, but I can actually be preparing their heart to receive communications. But you got to speak. You might even say one word, fly. And while that word, fly, is going from your mouth to their ears, I'm able to work with that word to communicate what that means, almost like an interpretation. For I will interpret to my people to give them a chance if you will speak what I've told you to say. Amen. Amen. Thank you.